Hi, thank you so much for watching. My name is Chris. Um, I'm super excited to share this new how-to video with you. If you do end up liking it, please consider subscribing, leave a comment. I try to answer all the questions that you might have. I really appreciate your support. So a while back, my buddy Mark watched one of my videos and sent me a link of a company called Tap Plastics, and they make a product that's called Black LED Acrylic. Never heard of it before, but I checked it out. It looks super cool. I ordered a couple 12 inch by 12 inch squares, and when I got them, I was blown away at how cool they were. What it does is, obviously it's black, but when you shine a light behind it, doesn't matter which side, for whatever reason, somehow it lets the light through, just like it would if you're using a normal uh, white translucent acrylic. And not only does it light the light through, it also lets the color through. So if I have a red light behind, this is gonna light up red. If I have a yellow light, it's gonna light up yellow. And I have no idea how it works, but it creates some pretty awesome effects, aesthetics. Not only during the day does it give it a unique appearance because it's black, but at night, it adds an extra element that I'm really excited to show this new project and how I incorporated it. And it does make me wanna do all my projects over again using this material. And I do wanna thank Tap Plastics. I reached out to them. They were generous enough to send me out some 12 by 12 inch squares that I used in my project. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can order this exact same product so you can use it to make your own. And I also wanna thank BTF Lighting. I reached out to them and they sent me out some WS2812B LED lights. Now I've been using these in my projects already and I absolutely love them. I think they're probably the best on the market. They have the most reviews on Amazon. Uh, it's a great quality product. Every single one that I've ordered, I've had zero issues with any of the pixels. They've all worked great. These are individually addressable, which means each pixel on the strip can be its own brightness and its own color at the exact same time as the other ones. So I definitely recommend them. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can purchase these. With that being said, let's get into the project and I hope you enjoy. The first thing I wanna do is cut out the largest possible equilateral triangle from this 12 inch by 12 inch piece of acrylic. And I YouTubed a bunch of ideas and this one seemed to work out pretty well. So I found a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of paper and I already made the folds on this one, so that's why you'll see the pre-made creases, but try to follow along, otherwise just YouTube it and you can um, find out as well. But you just make the two uh, folds hot dog style, and then after that's done, you kind of put it back straight, and then you make these diagonal folds, and then one corner is gonna be along that uh, crease you made initially, and then the line is gonna be all the way going to the corner. You flip it around, do it on the other side, you can start to see you're kind of getting a triangle shape and then after you make that fold and crease you take the bottom flip it up so that it makes three corners and I did the measurements with the ruler and it does work pretty well so all three sides are pretty much the exact same and then you just need to line it up with the acrylic and make your marks I'm going to be using a piece of chalk just to mark the corners where the triangle meets the end and then I will be using a ruler to make straight lines from each corner. Right now I'm just taking off all the plastic off the one side of the acrylic and this is just to get everything prepped for uh, cutting the triangles out. Now that the plastic's off on the one side, I flip it over and you'll see here that the reverse side, which is uh, going to be the matte black side, has the thin layer of paper on it and I'm going to leave that on here because it works pretty well to trace out the triangle shape so then I can make the cuts. Using the miter saw to cut the triangle out of the acrylic ended up being the quickest and easiest way. And here you can see, instead of taking that acrylic off and just rotating it to make another cut, which would require me to change the angle of the miter saw, I just put that piece of acrylic to the side, put a new piece of acrylic on there so I can make the exact same cut on the new piece. Now that I'm done with the first cut on all the sheets of the acrylic, I can now move on to the second cut. So I'm just trying to line things up here. 
And once I have it positioned, I will now move the uh, miter saw over to the angle that I now need to make the second cut on. And once I get that lined up, I can then just do the same for all the other pieces. To make the frame that the acrylic is going to sit in, I'm using some 1 inch by 4 inch by 8 foot long pieces of wood that I got at Home Depot and I think an 8 foot long board was about 7 or 8 dollars. And right now I'm just making marks every 14 and a half inches, which is where I'll be making my initial cuts to get these pieces of wood a little bit smaller. So for whatever reason, my table saw seems to make the cuts a little bit more accurate, so that's why I'm using this instead of my miter saw. And I'm going to be making sure that the angle from the sled where the wood is going to be rested on, that sliding miter gauge, to the saw is 30 degrees. So I'm using my digital angle finder to make sure that it reads 30 degrees, which will make the cuts required to form an equilateral triangle. You'll also notice I have that stop block attached to the sliding miter gauge. This is so that each piece of wood will be the exact same length when the cuts are done, and I want the length to be 14 and a quarter inches. For this step I'm going to be making that groove or channel that the acrylic is going to be fitting in and this cut is going to be very close to the top, I would say maybe about an eighth of an inch from the top of the wood. And then as far as how deep you want to make it, start out going maybe just about an eighth of an inch as well and then you can always go back and make a deeper cut if the acrylic doesn't fit in there nicely but you can't go back once you've done too much. Now that I have all the cuts made, I'm going to be painting the inside and below that channel that I just made white. So now it's time to start assembling the triangles. You can see here that the acrylic has that shiny side and then if you flip it over and I've kept the white kind of plastic on there so that it wouldn't get scratched, um, underneath here is the matte side and I definitely like the look of the matte side a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to be have facing out on this project. I have a piece of tape underneath each corner so that when I apply the wood glue and fold it all together, everything will stay put while it dries. Now that the triangles have dried, I just need to lay things out in some sort of pattern that I think might look cool and fit the space. Once I have the design, now I need to flip everything over so that I can work at securing everything together. For securing everything together, I'm going to be using a clamp to make sure that everything is lined up evenly, and then I'll be using two one and a half inch screws to secure each triangle to the next. Okay, 
Here's a little bit better angle where you can see what I'm doing here in this step. In this step, I'm simply trying to figure out how long my LED strips need to be to make it around the entire triangle. And since I plan on doing an individual strip in every single triangle, once I figure this one out, I can make nine more identical cuts. From my previous step, I know that I need 52 LEDs for each triangle. So I can just take this roll and cut it into a bunch of strips that each have 52 LEDs. I bought a long spool of 3-pin LED extension wire, and this is what I'm going to be using to connect each of the LED strips to the next triangle. Now my idea for wiring this up is to have the power coming in from the bottom of that first triangle. I'll run the LED strip around it, and then from the end of that first strip, I will attach and solder some wires to the beginning of the second LED strip in my second triangle. And then at the end of the LED strip in the second triangle, I will solder some wires to the beginning LED strip in the third triangle. And I'll continue to do this throughout the entire pattern. And soldering this project was super easy. I first just needed to figure out how long the extension wires needed to be from the end of one strip to the beginning of the next strip and then cut those down to size. Uh, strip back a little bit of the wires. And what I'm doing here is called tinning and what it's doing is it's feeding a little bit of that solder into the wire which is going to make it a lot easier to attach to the pad of the LED. So now I just flip the wires over and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. In this step I'm just going to be applying a little bit of solder to those copper pads and this is what we need to do in order for those wires that we just tinned to stick to the end here and provide the voltage, the ground and data continuation to the next LED strip. Here I'm going to be taking those wires that we tinned and just trimming them back a little bit. We don't need much at all for them to stick to the pads. Now this has got to be my favorite part of soldering LED strips is uh, when you take the wire that you've tinned, you place it over the pad that you're going to be attaching it to and then you gently press down. The heat of the soldering iron is going to melt everything. It's going to fuse together and as soon as you remove the heat, the solder hardens and then you have a solid connection. Now this project does have a lot of LEDs, so I'm going to be using this 5 volt 15 amp power supply. And it does come with that barrel adapter where you can plug your LED wires directly into. To get everything wired up, I'll be using that beginning piece that most of these LED strips come with. If you don't have that, that's no problem at all. You just have to solder some of the wires onto that beginning strip. I'm going to be using WLED software that's loaded onto an ESP2866 Wi-Fi board. And to connect everything together, I'm going to be using some jumper wires that I've cut in half. So you only need to cut two of the wires in half. The data wire you do not have to cut. And for the jumper cables, I have one male side. Male side's on the right, the female side is on the left. Now you'll notice the wires coming out of the LED strip that it comes with, uh, they're color coordinated. Uh, red is for voltage, green is for data, that's always in the middle, and then white is for the ground. And it doesn't matter what color my wires are, but you do want to make sure you realize which one you're plugging them into. So here it looks like I have the yellow is going to be plugged into the ground, the orange is going to be plugged into the data, and the brown is going to be plugged into the voltage or the power. I'm taking the other end of that jumper wire and it looks like I'm doing the ground wire right now, the yellow one. I'm twisting that back together and then once I'm done with that I'm going to grab the brown one which is my voltage 
and I'm gonna be twisting those wires together. So I'm gonna be taking that adapter, the power adapter, and I'm gonna be plugging in the power. So the power is the red wire that goes to my brown wire, and I'm just gonna be taking those wires that I've twisted together and inserting those into the plus terminal of the adapter. Once that's attached, I will be taking my yellow wires, which is the ground wires that I've twisted together, and putting that into the negative terminal. Once you're at this stage, you can just grab that female end of the power wire, and you can plug that into the VIN pin on our Wi-Fi board. And next you can then take the yellow wire, which is our ground or negative, and plug that into the ground pin on the Wi-Fi board, which is right next to the voltage one. Lastly, you can take the data cable and plug that right into the D4 pin on the Wi-Fi board. So if this was the only LED lights that we needed to power, this is all you'd need to do. This would be more than enough juice to light up all uh, of this strip, but we are going to need to inject some power at the end. And I'll plug it in here just to make sure everything works. So a little bit ago I said I was going to need to inject power at the end of this project as well, since the lights would not be bright enough if I was just having the power start at one end and then try to travel through all 10 strips of 52 lights. And this step is actually pretty easy. I'm going to be using that same extension wire and cutting a long strip of it. And one end I'm going to be plugging into the power source and the other end I'm going to be connecting to the last LED strip. Once I have that long extension wire cut, I'm going to peel back and expose two of the wires. I don't need all three of them for this step because I'm only connecting the ground and the voltage from the power source to the last LED. Strip and twist two of the wires on the one end and then go to the other end and do the same. So now that we have the power injection wires stripped, I just need to add them to the existing wires that are already in the power terminals. So once I get them unscrewed, I'm going to be adding the red power injection wire that I just stripped, and that's going to be added and twisted together with the existing power wire, which is the brown one. So that's going to be twisted in with the red power injection wire that I just cut here. Once these three are twisted together, this will go back in the plus terminal on the power adapter. Next I'm going to move on to attaching the white power injection wire that I just cut and that's going to be combined with the ground yellow wires that I previously have twisted together. So all three of those are going to get twisted together and then I will put them into the negative terminal on the power injector. Here just make sure if any of your jumper cables fell off your Wi-Fi board that you just plug them back in. I'm plugging my uh, data cable back into the D4 pin. So here I have all of the LED strips soldered together with the extension wires and I'm about to peel back the blue sticky tape and put all of the LED strips around the inside of the triangles. And at the time of recording this step, I still had no idea how much power I was going to need. So all of the things that I just did in the previous steps, I had yet to do here in the video. And you're going to see here shortly why before you start soldering all the LED strips together it's important to run a test path first uh, because you're going to definitely have to figure out what length of extension wires you're going to need to move from each triangle to the next.
So right now you're looking at the very end of the last LED that I just wrapped around the inside of the triangles. And I had this extra piece laying around my house. Now if you didn't have that uh, extra piece, you could just solder in the power injection wires to the ground and voltage pads on this last LED. And that's probably what I should have done. But I did have this connector and I'll use this instead. So I slide the LED strip into the three pin connector. And this is a little goofy because the voltage pin that this connects to is actually the white wire and the ground wire on the pin that this connects to is the red wire. So it's kind of backwards, so I need to pay attention to that. And then of course the data wire I'm not going to be using since that is being fed in through the opposite direction. Now all I need to do is grab my power injection wires that we have connected to the power source. And again, since this is kind of goofy, the power injection cord that is red from the power source, that's going to be my voltage one, that's going to be connecting to the white wire um, on the end connector here. And then the white wire from the power source is going to be connected to the red wire at the end here. And if you're confused, I guess the simplest way to describe this is just make sure the wire that is coming out of the plus terminal on your power source ends up finding its way to the voltage pad on the end of the LED strip. And then the white wire or whatever wire you have coming out of the negative terminal on the power source, make sure that is going into the ground pad on the end of the LED strip. Now that all the wiring is done, I'm going to be cutting out some white triangles to cover up the back of this project. And this is also going to help um, with hiding all of the cords because we have a big mess of cords in the back and we want to make sure those are neatly tucked away so you can never see them um, from the front. I'm going to be lining the paper up with the triangle and I'll kind of make a mark where the cords come out and I'll cut a notch out of the paper so that they can uh, neatly come through. And another thing that this paper is going to be doing is it's going to make sure the light is contained within the triangle and also give the LED something to bounce off of so it gets a little bit brighter inside. Now that all the wires are somewhat taped down and hidden, I can flip it over here and see how it looks on the front side and hopefully uh, none of the wires will be sticking out. We are about halfway done here and this is kind of how I envision it hanging on my wall. And what I also wanted to do now is build some LED floating shelves to go under it and I think that would really complete the look. For the first floating shelf that I'm going to make, I'm going to need two pieces of wood that are 36 inches long. I'll be using the same wood that I used for the triangles which is 1 inch by 4 inches. For this part of the project I'm also going to need to use a 1 inch by 2 inch piece of wood and I'll cut this to the same 36 inches. I'm going to be cutting the wood on one side of the floating shelves to match the angle of the triangles that are on the wall. And this might not make a lot of sense now, but you'll see a little bit better in the next steps here what I'm going for. The angle here in the digital finder from the fence to the saw is going to be 60 degrees. And for the second floating shelf, I'm going to be cutting the same pieces of wood, but only 30 inches this time. So now I need to make an end piece for this, and all I'm going to do is take a scrap piece of that 1 by 4 inch wood, line it up, and then draw pencil marks horizontal so that in the end everything will be flush.
Both of the angled end pieces are done and they line up pretty good. Now I'm just going to be cutting two end pieces for the other side and these are just going to be your normal straight cuts. Now take the long pieces of wood for the floating shelves and create that channel in these just like we did for the triangles where the acrylic is going to slide into. I'm going to be using a spiral bit on the end pieces to create the channels where the acrylic is going to fit. I'm painting the inside of these floating shelves white and I'll be painting below that channel. So you can use some tape or just paint really carefully to make sure you don't get anything above that. I'm going to use some Gorilla Wood glue to secure the long pieces of wood together. And for this step, just make sure that the one side that has the angled cuts are lined up evenly. Once the glue is dried, you can now attach the slanted piece to the end. And for the other floating shelf, just do the exact same thing. Once I figured out exactly where I'm going to hang these, I can now go and cut the other end down to the exact size. starting to see what the finished product is going to look like and I'm not going to glue on the end pieces yet. I figured that would be easier to do once it's actually hanging on the wall. Right here I'm just going to determine how long of an LED strip that I need inside the shelves. I'm looking back on this project I should have attached the beginning of these strips to the end of the strip on the triangle just to have one continuation. Instead I wired these up with a separate controller and separate power source which you'll see. You'll see me cutting off the first LED on this to get rid of those uh, initial wires. And I'm doing this because I'm planning on just soldering some extension wire for the power, for the data, and the ground all the way to the outlet where I will have the controller and the power. And having those extra wires up there um, would just add bulkiness that's unnecessary. My plan is to run some long power, ground, and data wires up the back side of the triangle display and then it will cut over horizontally and then feed into the first floating shelf which will be the smaller of the two. From there I will solder on some extension wires that will run out the right side of the smaller floating shelf and go down about a foot and feed into the larger floating shelf on the right side and then that LED strip will go from right to left. And for this part of the project I ordered some silicone wires and I wish I would have used these for the triangle as well because they're a lot more flexible and easy to work with. In this step I'm going to be soldering on the power wire which is the red one here, the white one which will be my data wire, and then the red and black wire which is my ground. And this LED strip is going to be in the smaller shelf, which is on top. Here's a close-up showing you just how flexible these silicon wires are. So they're great for projects that require you to put these in some tight spaces with some uh, tight corners. Here I'm just figuring out how long the LED strip needs to be to fit inside the longer of the two floating shelves. I'm going to be connecting the two LED strips together with some extension wire. And the gap between the floating shelves is going to be about a foot, so the extension wire needs to be, I would say, at least 16 inches to give yourself enough wiggle room if you have any trouble.
since I want this to sit flush against the wall, I'm going to be taking a little groove out of the bottom of the smaller of the floating shelves, and this is where the wires are going to be fed into this one. Here I'll be doing the same thing to both of the other sides of the floating shelves. And since I hadn't put the end pieces on the non-slanted side, I can use a dado bit, raise it up, and carve out a half circle where the cords can be fed through. Since I'm waiting to glue these end pieces until everything's on the wall, I just use some tape to attach them and then cut that small groove in again for the cords to go through. Since I'd already glued the slanted edge pieces on, I can just use a drill bit to make a hole to feed the cords through on this. I'm using the same black LED acrylic from Tap Plastics, and I'm just measuring how wide I need to make the cut so that it slides into the channels. Since the shelves have the one side that is slanted, I need to cut two of these at an angle. So in my previous step, I made the angled cuts the wrong way, so I had to flip the acrylic over and make those same cuts again, which I'm doing the correct way here. Here I'm going to be sliding in all of the acrylic that I cut, just testing to make sure it all fits, and then anything that's hanging over the end, I'm going to have to trim off so I can put on the end pieces. Here's a good visual of how things will be laid out when I have it up on the wall. So these are the long extension wires that are going to be running to the controller and the outlet on the wall. And these are also the ones that I'm going to try hiding behind the triangle design. And the end of this LED strip on the top will be connected to the beginning of the second LED strip on the longer shelf. And these shelves will be about a foot apart. And that's about it, so now I'm just hanging things up, and I won't spend too much time on this step, but I will, after the final pictures and videos, uh, go through a quick rundown of how I attached everything to the wall, and how I was able to hide most of the wires. So if we go down, and this is still a mess, so I'll figure, I'll figure out some way to hide everything. But this is the main power source that I have that's plugged into the uh, 10 triangles. This is the phone charger cord that I have uh, providing power to the floating shelves. And this cord is hooked right into the ESP2866 here. And then these long wires are actually, well, I figured out I couldn't run the data wire from here all the way up to the floating shelves uh, because there's some interference. So a fix was I ran the power data and ground from here and there's one pixel that I soldered everything together right about here. And then from that pixel, then I ran my long power data and ground wires all the way up to the floating shelves and that fixed the problem. So I don't know if it's, it's some sort of software glitch, um, but that was the workaround and that worked great. So um, from there you can see I have everything tucked in um, behind this little sleeve and then I have everything running behind the triangles and then those extension wires are coming out from the side of the triangle and then into the top floating shelf which is the smaller of the two and then I have that going through and then I have the extension wires going from the top to the bottom one and then into this LED strip and I took this apart so you can get a feel for how I hung these up um, on the wall it was really simple I took two two and a half inch screws I believe it was and then just drilled them directly into the studs and I did that on the bottom one as well as the top. So those are on there nice and secure. Now as far as how I hung the big triangles is I use these 
L-shaped clamps, I don't know what they're called, but I screwed two of them right into um, the triangle and then the other two I used some longer screws, I think about two inch screws and put those right into the studs as well. And then I did that on two at the top. So I have a total of three holding up the big triangle. And then I did throw up another triangle here. So I didn't put a how-to video on this particular triangle, but um, I just threw it up there, ran a separate power data, um, and that's how I did that.